Celebrities, SNL stars, and the man who could have been Spider-Man. Here's a rundown of the absolute best cameos in Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. When we catch up with Miles after Gwen's Across the Spider-Verse opening, he's late for a meeting with his parents and his school guidance counselor. They're all supposed to be chatting about his future college applications, but Miles is too busy battling the spots across Brooklyn. He's lying to you, and I think you know it. If you thought the guidance counselor's dry tone sounded familiar, you might be a fan of Saturday Night Live, as esteemed alum Rachel Dratch is the voice behind the character. While she played a wide range of roles during her tenure on the show, Dratch is probably most famous for her Debbie Downer character. The only thing higher than gas prices in this country are divorce rates. <laughs> it's also interesting to note that while obviously distorted and caricatured to fit the animated style, the school counselor bears a striking resemblance to Dratch herself. Given how perfectly the counselor fits in her repertoire, it's not unlikely that the role was written with Dratch already in mind. If you're a big Spider-Man fan, you probably already know about Donald Glover's complicated relationship with the character. Back in 2010, when Sony was casting roles for The Amazing Spider-Man, the now-acclaimed multi-hyphenate was publicly favored for the leading role. Donald Glover can play Spider-Man. He's nerdy. Fans quickly rallied online on his behalf, and even Stan Lee threw his support behind Glover, but he was never given the opportunity to audition. Glover eventually did join the Marvel Cinematic Universe as a low-key cameo version of Aaron Davis, Miles' uncle, and the secret identity of the Prowler in Spider-Man Homecoming, so it only makes sense that he'd reprise that role in Across the Spider-Verse. Glover's cameo is mostly played as a gag, but it's also a clear nod to the actor's long and complicated history with the modern Spider-Man franchise. The version of the Prowler that he plays here isn't the same as his Homecoming incarnation, as he actually has some of the purple armor that the character typically wears. After scuffling with Miles around Brooklyn, the spot vanishes by disappearing into himself. However, he's not trapped as an endless stream of holes provides gateways into other universes. Most of the parallel worlds are animated, albeit in a variety of styles, but one portal takes the spot to a live-action realm, right into the convenience store run by Peggy Lou's Mrs. Chen. If you haven't seen the Tom Hardy Venom films, this scene was probably pretty confusing, but in reality, Mrs. Chen is a mainstay of the Venom franchise. Her extensive experience with the titular alien anti-hero is why she's so completely unfazed by the spot's appearance. Lou even starred as Mrs. Chen in a web series promoting Venom Let There Be Carnage. Lou is set to return again as Mrs. Chen in the upcoming third Venom film. There may not be a more iconic superhero movie performance than J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson. The Oscar-winning actor first played the Daily Bugle's cantankerous editor-in-chief in 2002 Spider-Man, and he reprised the role in both of Sam Raimi's sequels. Since then, Simmons has played a different version of Jameson in the MCU, in which the character is more of a conspiracy-obsessed Alex Jones parody. We'll be right back after a brief word from Daily Bugle Supplements, the only other daily fix you need. At this point, it's weird to imagine anyone else playing the part, so it should come as little surprise that Simmons once again embodies Jameson in Across the Spider-Verse. Some of his lines are pulled directly from the Raimi films, including in one scene featuring a Lego version of the Daily Bugle in which he demands pictures of Spider-Man. However, there's also some new dialogue in the film. During Gwen's opening sequence, we see how she's become blamed for the death of Peter Parker in her universe. A muddled mess of accusatory audio plays over her somber scene, and Simmons' voice can be heard referencing the mysterious Spider-Woman. Given how beloved Simmons' Jameson is, it's a treat to see that he's willing to return to the role again and again. A musical comedy group might not be your first pick to feature in a superhero movie, but then again, Across the Spider-Verse isn't a typical superhero movie. Really, maybe it shouldn't be all that surprising that two members of the Lonely Island appear in the film. The first Lonely Island member we encounter is Yorma Takoni, who voices the strange, Renaissance-era version of the Vulture who battles Gwen at the beginning of the movie. Takoni previously voiced multiple characters in Into the Spider-Verse, including the Green Goblin. Later on, we meet Ben Riley, aka the Scarlet Spider, who's voiced by fellow Lonely Island alum Andy Samberg. Scarlet Spider arguably plays a larger role in the film, as he's part of the task force created by Miguel O'Hara to hunt down Miles after his escape. The character is pretty similar to the kind of comedic fare that fans of Sandberg's work should be accustomed to, a boisterous, oblivious goof with a handful of pretty good laugh lines. As if there weren't enough Saturday Night Live alumni in Across the Spider-Verse already, stalwart straight man Taron Killam also shows up. Killam voices both Web Slinger, a cowboy version of Spider-Man, and his horse Widow, who also wears a webbed mask. The two bizarre variants only really speak in one brief scene, so you'd be forgiven for not noticing Taron's presence in the film. Later on, Web Slinger and Widow join the stampede after Miles when he attempts to escape Miguel's grasp. Though Killam is certainly most famous for his tenure on SNL, he's appeared in dozens of TV shows and films. He's also lent his voice talents to the animated Star Wars shows The Bad Batch and Young Jedi Adventures. Cameos aren't just for actors, as the late Stan Lee himself could have told you. 
In addition to the various SNL alumni and Hollywood icons who sneak their voices into Across the Spider-Verse, two acclaimed animators are also hiding in the background. First, Pixar legend Peter Sohn makes a brief cameo as Miles' roommate, Yankee. The acclaimed animator recorded lines for the character during production on Into the Spider-Verse, but those bits were ultimately cut, so it's nice to see him reinstated in the sequel. Are those my Jordans? I can't help it if we're the same size. Sohn's career in film animation began with The Iron Giant, and he's worked on everything from The Incredibles and Finding Nemo to The Good Dinosaur, which he directed. He's also the director of the 2023 Pixar film Elemental. Throughout his career, Sohn has made a habit of voicing smaller characters here and there, and his biggest such role to date is probably the robotic cat Sox in Lightyear. But he's not the only animator with a voice cameo. Later on in the film, during Miles' escape from the Spider Society, we encounter a Spider-Man therapist voiced by animator Mike Rianda. And then I looked at my uncle and... Uh, let me guess. He died? Rianda gained widespread acclaim for co-writing and co-directing the Netflix animated film The Mitchells vs. The Machines, which was produced by Across the Spider-Verse writers Christopher Miller and Phil Lord. Zoe Kravitz played the famous Mary Jane in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, but because it's been five years since that movie was released, many may have forgotten. MJ has a small role in Across the Spider-Verse, only really appearing in one scene to talk with Peter B. Parker about their daughter. But yes, even in that brief moment, it's still Kravitz. In the time since the first movie came out, Kravitz has expanded her superhero repertoire by delivering a spectacular turn as Catwoman in The Batman, starring opposite Robert Pattinson. It's nice to see that her DC ties haven't kept her from returning to the world of Spider-Man, though. And there's a good chance that she'll have a larger role again in Beyond the Spider-Verse next year. Though her part in Across the Spider-Verse is small, it's far from insignificant. MJ delivers one of the core monologues in the movie, explaining the inherent chaos of becoming a parent and the impossibility of being fully prepared for change. Acclaimed hip-hop and R&B producer Metro Boomin worked on the Across the Spider-Verse soundtrack, but that's not where his contributions ended. He also lends his voice to a new Spider-Man variant in the film that goes by the app name of Metro Spider. The character appears briefly to deliver a quick one-liner during the Spider Society chase. There's nowhere to run. My bad, everybody. There was somewhere to run. Metro Boomin's grungy production style leaves its fingerprints all over the soundtrack in the best way, imbuing action scenes and somber moments alike with a rich depth of audio intensity. The DJ made his fame producing radio hits, but he's clearly just as at home working on a sweeping cinematic score. He contributes hugely to the overall aesthetic of Across the Spider-Verse, and it's nice to see that work rewarded with an on-screen cameo. While not exactly cameos in the traditional sense, Across the Spider-Verse does feature some visual nods to the live-action Spider-Man movies of the past. Both Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield appear in archival footage, which mostly shows up during Miguel's multiverse exposition. As he explains the canon events that connect all Spider-Man variants, different instances manifest around him and Miles. These include the deaths of Uncle Ben and Captain Stacy as seen in the previous Sony films. Because of the specific moments chosen, Cliff Robertson's Uncle Ben and Dennis Leary's George Stacy also appear. It's particularly touching to see Robertson, who passed away in 2011. His version of Ben Parker remains extremely iconic and influential, and it only seems right to give him his flowers in a movie about the franchise as a whole. Across the Spider-Verse stops short of filming any new material for McGuire or Garfield, and that's probably for the best. The use of their footage here is tasteful, evoking just enough nostalgia without overdoing it. As first shown in the trailers, Across the Spider-Verse features a staggering number of different Spider-Man variants. Some are core characters with key roles to play in the story, many are entirely new creations just meant as goofy gags, and a few are callbacks to specific moments in the wall crawler's long media life. Two of the latter appear during the Spider Society scenes, both representing a different animated TV iteration of the Webhead's adventures. The striking nano suit from Spider-Man Unlimited, the sequel to Spider-Man the Animated Series that ran from 1999 to 2001, can be seen in Miguel's base chasing after Miles. Also visible in Spider-Man's 2099 HQ is the squat round Spider-Man from 2008's The Spectacular Spider-Man cartoon. Just as he was in his own series, this particular variant is voiced by Josh Keaton in Across the Spider-Verse. I am the Spectacular Spider-Man! In addition to the different comic book variants and cartoon Spider-Man who appear in the Spider Society, there are two characters pulled straight out of Insomniac Games' acclaimed 2018 video game. The PS4 versions of both Peter Parker and Miles Morales can be seen walking and talking through Miguel's base, and later on, the video game version of Peter even speaks. As you'd expect, he's voiced by Yuri Lowenthal here, the same prolific voice actor who plays the character in the PlayStation title. 
This isn't the movie's only nod to the 2018 game, either. When Miles bursts into his dorm room through the window at the beginning of the movie, his roommate is playing the game on their shared TV. The PlayStation Spider-Man has been hailed as a huge achievement for the franchise, and it spawned a half-sequel starring Miles himself. As such, it's only right that the game gets its own little cameo in Across the Spider-Verse.